It looks like most creators switched to Sony over recent years, at least if they mainly shoot video. But for me, it was the opposite. I shot Sony for a pretty long time, but now I'm back to Canon. I used the R6 Mark II and the R5 over the past five months around, and the R6 Mark II has actually become my main camera. I will tell you in this video why. And I would say after all those months, it's finally time to do a review. And here I actually want to talk about my experience with this camera and not just go through the specs and if the camera holds up because well you know the specs already and there are already many reviews like that out. So let's get started. So let's directly address the elephant in the room, the video quality. I shot C-Log3 all the time. I never used any picture profiles or so because I want to capture as much information as possible in the camera. So C-Log3 is the only profile that makes sense for that in my opinion. And I was a little bit worried about shooting in C-Log3 because obviously the Canon R5 and R6 Mark II both have a bit less dynamic range as Sony and Fujifilm X-H2S. It's about one and a half to two stops according to Gerald Andan. And and I must say now that I used it for a few months, I never had a situation where I felt like that the dynamic range of the R6 Mark II would be a limiting factor. Of course, I'm not saying that I would not like to have more dynamic range. More dynamic range is always better than not having it. But from my experience, I must say that you really don't have to worry about the dynamic range of the R6 Mark II and also the R5 are perfectly fine. Of course, dynamic range is not the only aspect when it comes to video quality. I also like more subjective aspects. Maybe some people like the colors of Canon more, some others like Fujifilm more, etc. I must say that overall the colors are best on Fujifilm cameras, but I would uh, put Canon on a second place here. Colors overall come out really good too and they sometimes have a bit filmic character. But there's one thing that I noticed about Canon colors both on the R6 Mark II and R5 and that is uh, or not, not about the colors but the image overall and that is that it looks a little bit more dynamic for me. I don't really know how to say it. Maybe people would describe it as 3D pop or something like that. But oftentimes when I grade the footage, I feel like it has a really nice dynamic feel to it. And now I'm not exactly sure even if that comes from the bodies from Canon or if that's the lens. I mostly use the 15 to 35 millimeter f 2.8L lens and also the um, 24 millimeter to 105 f4 and the 70 to 200 f4. And now, these lenses are all L lenses, so maybe Canon also does something with the lenses to give it a bit more 3D pop or something like that. Did not test it artificially, but to me it really has a nice feel. I really like the footage come on, coming out of this camera. Also regarding video quality, I get exactly the same quality in 4K 60p as I get in 4K 24, so it, it's not like super important like on the a7 IV with the 4k 60 crop also looks good but i definitely prefer to have exactly the same image just with a higher frame rate if i need that yeah getting sweaty already we're in kuchang right now in thailand it's pretty hot here i actually live in chiang mai usually but the air pollution there is quite bad right now so we went south and now talking about video quality let's also quickly talk about photos i mean quality wise you probably know it already that the photos of this camera are great there's nothing to complain about i did not notice a significant difference between the photos of the a7 IV and the Canon cameras but what I noticed what I like a lot more on Canon cameras when it comes to photography is how easy it is to work with the raw picture files because when I use the preview functionality in Finder Canon was the only camera that I had so far where the RAWs directly preview. When I used Fujifilm and Sony before I always had to shoot in JPEG plus RAW because I think it was Fujifilm that the RAWs didn't show up in Finder preview at all and on the Sony cameras it already took a few seconds or so until they showed up so that slowed me down a lot and that's why I always shot JPEGs then as well. I mean on, on Fujifilm you can basically just shoot JPEG as well. It's, it's Fujifilm, they look great. But yeah, if I shoot RAWs, I like to have a very fast loading preview of that in Finder. And Canon so far is, has the only cameras that give me that. And this is both the thing on R6 Mark II and even the 45 megapixel RAW photos of the R5. It's pretty much instant. Like the moment I click on the file, it previews. So no problem there. That's actually one thing that I really love when I shoot time lapses, for example, where I have to look through the photos and see where my time lapse started, etc. When I shot some other photos before, so it is actually something that I value a lot for from the photography side of Canon. 
And talking about autofocus of the R6 Mark II, I would rate it somewhere in between the XH2S and Sony. Now the thing is, if you get the settings right on the R6 Mark II, which is actually not too complicated, then it is on par with Sony, at least when it comes to eye tracking, object tracking, etc. But the difference is there that if you just leave the standard settings and you want to do face tracking, for example, then I found it a lot more likely to get the occasional hunt on the Canon R6 Mark II over the a7 IV, especially like the newer autofocusing system on the on Sony cameras. Like a7S3 is pretty good, but it's not as good as Sony a7 IV from my experience. And that's why I would rate it slightly below Sony. Like on the Canon, I have to change some settings to really make it work that I can really trust it. While on Sony cameras, it's pretty much you unbox the camera, you put it in front of you and you can directly record it, will track your face. But face tracking, of course, is not the only use case when it comes to autofocusing. Fo Must say that when you use single point autofocus, for example, all of those cameras do well. I would not say that there's a significant difference between Fujifilm, Canon and Sony. However, when it comes to to touch tracking, for example, when you touch on the display and it should track a certain point, there these Sony cameras are definitely a bit more sticky. Like on, on a Canon, I have the impression it really depends. If you have a really contrasty point where it's easy for the camera to detect, then it's also really, really sticky. But the moment it gets a bit more complicated for the camera, then it will most likely lose it pretty quick. So the, from this perspective, I would also give it to Sony here. So I'm overall very happy with the autofocus of the R6 Mark II. I mentioned already in my final review of the X-H2S that I will sell the X-H2S because I had autofocusing issues with this camera in my studio room where I had gray walls. I don't know if it wasn't enough contrast or whatever happened there that the camera didn't track me well. But now with the R6 Mark II, I don't have that problem anymore. I set the tracking sensitivity to negative two. And since I did that, uh, since I <laughs> and since I did that, it just works perfectly. So no problems anymore with the autofocus. And let's talk about bodies and button customization. And I can only say that when it comes to body design, Canon just nails it with their cameras. Not in terms of size and weight. Sony is a little bit smaller, Fuji as well. I mean, Fuji is APS-C anyway. They have more options to make it sw smaller, but the way how those bodies feel, feel in your hands, like this super deep grips, they, they just feel good. Even with my small hands, I prefer that. And then also the overall body design, like the material that they use is slightly like softer feeling material on top. I just love that. And I overall feel like that the Canon bodies feel more like a solid system together with their lenses. Like when I, when I have a Sony or a Fujifilm body in their hands, I don't know, it doesn't feel as solid as with Canon. It's not something that, you make, that makes your videos better or anything, but it's something that you notice while shooting. And I really love that feeling that the cameras gives, give me. However, it's not all good when it comes to button customization, for example, I would clearly say that Canon lags behind. For example, I am able to set the record functionality to my shutter button on Canon cameras, but then I am not able to change the functionality of the record button. So I essentially throw one button away that I could use for something else. And there I'm also quite limited with the functionalities that I can assign to buttons. For example, I would love to be able to assign the movie crop functionality to any button so that I can quickly press a button and it crops in and gives me an additional zoom. On Sony cameras I can do that, on Fujifilm cameras I can do that. I cannot do that on Canon. So for now I just use a C3 picture profile for my crop mode to at least be able to switch kind of quickly, but it's not ideal because then my exposure settings change. Maybe I even have the white balance different in the C3 profile. So I would have to change those settings again. It is time that I lose. And that's why I would really prefer Canon. If any one of you are listening to this review, please just give us the option to set that, to quickly be able to crop in with a press of a button and make it possible to change the functionality of the record button, at least if you have the record functionality assigned to the shutter button or any other button. Like that would actually do a lot. So these are definitely things that I would love to have changed, but they're also not deal breakers for me. And especially when it comes to the bodies overall, kind of say it, it makes it hard to want to shoot another camera if you have that feeling in your hand all the time. And next up is IBIS. I tested it also in my comparison with the R5, A7 IV and X-H2S. And 
the IBIS overall of the system is great. Like the moment you are at 24 millimeters or higher, then it's one of the smoothest IBIS systems that you can have. This, like, like even when I do really, really tiny camera movements where I usually get a little bit of jitter with both Fujifilm and Sony, I don't get any jitter there at all. It's like super smooth. It kind of detects your motion and then really smoothly moves the sensor around. This is something that I really love. However, the problem that we discovered there and that was already clear from the beginning is the wobble in the corners the moment you go into that ultra wide angle view especially with my 15 millimeter lens now from my own experience i must say I, I don't use cameras that often while i'm walking around so i don't get much wobble in the corners and i also publish my youtube videos like this one in a two by one aspect ratio instead of 16 by 9 or 17 by 9 and so a little bit more of the top and bottom of my videos get cut off what also makes that you see the wobbles in the corners a little bit less and that's why I must say that for me personally, the corner wobble is not really an issue, but it's only me. If you're a travel vlogger, for example, and you really have to constantly walk around with your camera, then I would say that the R6 Mark II is definitely not the right camera to get because of that IBIS wobble, same counts for the R5, etc. If you want to go into the Canon system and do videos like that, then I would probably look into the Canon R8, which is essentially the same camera as the R6 Mark II, but it's smaller, it's lighter, it doesn't have IBIS, and the optical image stabilization of Canon lenses together with the electronic image stabilization of Canon bodies is usually good enough. In that case, you can actually save thousand dollars and just go for the EOS R8. And let's also talk about a few annoyances that I had with this camera and there it's at first that every time I use a 4K 60 mode, doesn't matter if it's cropped or not, it directly gives me, the, gives me the warning that the camera might overheat. It would be enough to only show it once that I know, okay, it's a mode where the camera might overheat a little bit faster but I don't have to see that every time again. Canon, please give us a firmware upgrade where we can deactivate that in the menu because I don't have to see that any time. I know it already after seeing it hundreds of times. And then the moment you press the record button, the level meter turns off and also the histogram. And I don't really see any reason why. Please Canon also give us a menu option to deactivate that. I want to see my level metering all the time. We've recently shot here on a boat, for example. Boats obviously shake and having that level meter, it helps so much to keep your camera steady. And also histogram, like the moment my lighting changes a little bit, I at least want to be able to see if I have to stop recording and readjust or if I can leave it like it is. And the histogram helps a lot with that. And talking about exposure, this camera also has false color, which I would love to use, but I can't use it because in in order to use false color, you have to turn the view assist functionality off in C-Log3, which doesn't make any sense. Like I want to be able to properly review my image and I also want to use view assist to quickly set my exposure. So please Canon also make that possible that maybe somewhere in the background, the view assist functionality automatically gets disabled when you turn the, the false color option on and then the moment you turn false color off, the view assist function should turn off again. That would be a great improvement for this camera because as it is right now, I never use false color to be honest, just because of that. However, what you can do if you want to make exposing your shots in C-Log3 a little bit easier is to use zebras. I have my zebras set to, I think it was 50 or 55 plus minus five. And then I just make sure that bright skin tones are always in that area. And then my sh sh shots are generally exposed well. These are like kind of annoyances that I think Canon could fix at any time with a firmware upgrade. But so far they haven't done it on their older cameras like the R5. So I doubt that it will come for the R6 Mark II. But I definitely want to encourage every reviewer here of Canon cameras to mention these issues so that ca Canon finally listens and implements these features so that we finally can use the camera as it should be. I have a little bit different take on the lens situation with Canon. So at first I basically agree with most reviewers because obviously if you want to get into that Canon system as a beginner and your budget is quite limited, then not having lenses like a 28 to 75 f 2.8 available like it is on Sony is kind of a deal breaker. Like if, if I would now be a beginner, I want to buy my first full frame camera. I have $2,500 to spend. To be honest, I would not spend it on Canon. That is amazing mainly because of the lens choices. Like the lenses that you can buy for less than thousand dollars for Canon cameras right now, Canon RF at least, is a joke in my opinion. It's, what is it, F4 to F7.1 or something like that on some lenses. It's like, 
if, if I can get an f2.8 zoom lens on Sony, why, why would I go for Canon, right? However, lenses are also the reason why I chose Canon, because I'm not a beginner, I have the budget to pay for it, I make a full-time income with my video work here on YouTube, so I, I can justify paying a little bit more for my bodies and also for my lenses, and that's why I got into the Canon system, because I think that the lenses that you have available, if you can afford it, they are actually the best, like the 15 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. I used this lens, as mentioned before, already on the Canon R8 a few years ago. There was actually a main driver while I even thought about going back to Canon when the R6 Mark II came out, because I remembered back to those times how much I loved the 15 to 35 millimeter lens. So I thought, hmm, now uh, that Canon has a body that seems to be pretty usable for video work, maybe let's try that out again. So that's obviously my favorite lens, also the lens that I use the most all the time. And then there's also the 70 to 200 millimeter f4. Sony also has a 70 to 200 f4, but it's a bit heavier, still not too heavy though, but it's also longer. Like every time when I got in the shop and I looked for a 70 to 200 lens for my Sony camera, I ended up going out or leaving the shop without a lens because I never liked any of those lenses that were available there. But now seeing the 70 to 200 f4 on Canon, it's great. It's a tiny little lens. It's very lightweight at around 700 gram. It's like a lens that I always throw in my bag. It's, it's very rare that I don't have this lens with me and that doesn't happen often with tele lenses. And also when I think about what lenses I want to buy in the future, I feel quite safe with the Canon system because the price is the only thing that people complain about those lenses. But when it comes to image quality, Everyone says that these lenses are top-notch and from what I've seen they are and I would actually say that after many years of like switching systems back and forth and buying cheap lenses etc it's finally time for me to build a solid system of lenses and there I want to be sure that I really have the best lenses available or at least some of the best lenses and with Canon L lenses I know that that's the case and yeah G Master lenses for example are also good but many G Master lenses for example suffer from chromatic aberrations Canon L lenses mostly don't do that, for example. So overall, I think that if you have the budget to invest in Canon RFL lenses, then yeah, then it makes total sense to get into that system. However, as mentioned before, if you're a beginner, if you're limited in your budget, then it's clearly not the system that I would go for. So we're nearly approaching the end of the video and that is actually a good opportunity to talk about overheating on this camera. I never had any overheating warning except for the test that I did against the R5, A7 IV and XH2S. There the camera only did one and a half hours around under like conditions where it got really, really hot in that room where I did it. But now I've, I'm recording it for 53 minutes already. There's no overheating warning, nothing on this camera. It's 4K 24 frames per second. <laughs> And as you can see, I'm on Kochang here right now. Can you actually see it or not? I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's 28 degrees right now. I'm sitting in the shade, sun gets done, shines a little bit on the camera. But yeah, no overheating warning. So no problems with overheating today. And that also confirms what I had over all the months that I was shooting this camera. I never even got an overheating warning. If you worry about overheating with this camera, don't worry, <laughs> you won't have any issues. Okay, I talked a lot about my experience with the R6 Mark II now, but there's one question left and that is why I even switched to Canon instead of Sony. It's like, actually I mentioned quite a lot in this video that I think that in many regards, people will like Sony more. Now, the reason is actually my style of shooting and that is a bit specific because at first, of course, I shoot my YouTube videos. I have to film myself a lot. Then I also shoot travel videos, sometimes for myself, sometimes for travel companies. And for those videos, I obviously need good video specs, 4K 120 FPS, 10 bit, etc. But then I also do a bit of photography and not just general photography for that, even lower megapixels like the A7S III, etc. would be enough. But I also do time-lapse photography. And I, I like when I shoot time-lapse lapses to crop in a lot to animate it in post and generally time lapses is most of the time landscape photography so I want to have lots of megapixels a lot of detail there that I can work with and Sony does not offer me any body that can do all of that if I only want to go out with one body that's why on Sony cameras I always went out with the A7S 3 and the A7 IV just so that I have the 33 megapixels for my time lapses and maybe sometimes a B cam if I want to do one uh, some stuff with my A7S 3 but then A7S 3 for like 4k 120 frames per second etc and now when it comes to Canon I have the Canon R5 Canon R5 shoots 4k 120 yes it's not oversampled but it still looks very good 
It shoots 4K 24 oversampled. I have 45 megapixels available for my time lapses. So if I only want to go out with one camera, then Canon is clearly the better system for me. Doesn't mean that it's the same for you because maybe if you only shoot video, if you're a travel vlogger or whatever, in that case, Sony, especially ZV-E1, if you travel a lot, etc., might actually be the better option. And then of course, there's also the future that I see with the Canon system. At first, I never shot a cinema camera before, so this is something that I want to get into within the next one or two years. So I researched a lot, of course, already. And I must say that the Canon C70 seems to be the best cinema camera for like my users, because I'm not the person that wants to rig everything around all the time. I'm more that guy that just grabs the body and wants to get his shots. And with the C70, it seems to be more like, more like a camera where I can do that, while it also has all the great functionalities like built-in ND filters, etc. And what I'm also thinking about is that the actual only disadvantage that Canon bodies really have right now is that the dynamic range is a little bit lower as on Sony and Fujifilm, but I don't think that will, that will stay like that forever. Like I, I, I expect that in the next generation of Canon bodies, they will give us C-Log2 most likely, and they will probably insert some BSI or maybe even stacked sensors that give us more dynamic range. And so the way how I see it is that, yeah, now I'm already invested then in all those good lenses. And then when those better bodies come, then I essentially have the perfect system in maybe two or three years or whenever these new bodies will come out. And for now, it's actually all I need. Like as mentioned before, I don't really need more dynamic range. So yeah, even in the future, I wouldn't actually have to switch, but you know, like better is always better. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I see Canon cameras right now. I'm not sponsored by Canon. They never sent me any cameras for free. They never sent me money or anything. Also same cause for Sony. Sony never sent me anything. Fujifilm never sent me anything. It actually makes more sense for me from a financial perspective for my YouTube channel to stick with Sony and Fuji because Viltrox always sent me lenses and I actually like their lenses a lot. They can't make any lenses for Canon, so it's actually a disadvantage for me. Just to mention it here, it's not like sponsored or anything. This is my honest opinion. And yeah, that's how I think about Canon and why I'm now shooting the R6 Mark II as my main camera and the R5. Ah, yeah, I wanted to tell you why the R6 Mark II is my main camera and not the R5. It's simply because I like the body more, the on off button is on the right side. So while I take the camera up, I can already turn the camera on. So it's on directly when I want to get the shot on the R5. It's on the left side. So I always have to put it in my left hand and turn it on, that sucks. And then also with the switch between video and photo mode, that's better, etc. And I've oversampled 4K60. So the 4K60 in the R6 Mark II is better on the R than on the R5. So if I have both camera with, cameras with me, I mainly choose the R6 Mark II. Then I only use the R5 when I need 4K 120 frames per second or when I want to shoot time lapses, etc. So yeah, just to mention that here as well. But yeah, that's it for the review. I hope you enjoyed it and it helped you a bit to make a decision when buying cameras. I would still say that for most people, if you mainly shoot video, you will most likely go with Sony just because of the lens situation. But yeah, if you have that money, I think it also makes total total sense to go into the Canon system. And yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And if it was helpful, please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for upcoming reviews. See ya.